www.ebitda.com. Educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the August 2nd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve E. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During the next 60 minutes, 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-664. If you can't dial in... We've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead, send me an email, send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a mixed bag out there. The Dow is trading down 65 points. The NASDAQ and the Dow transports are down 281. The S&P is up 15. NASDAQ 100 up 97. Russell's up 15. Semis are up 34. Gold's up 5 bucks. Silver's off 17 cents. Light sweet crude is up 247. Natural gas back 48 cents. The 30-year treasury is off 1 point in 1930 seconds. She's trading at 143.03. Lead the charge dollar-wise, the upside, you've got a rocket ship called AMTD Digital uh, up... Um, Wow, this thing is all over the place. Uh, I looked at it uh, just a few minutes ago with, I think, someone in the den. It was at 2300 bucks. Now it's $1,800. So there's some dynamite going on there. Booking Holdings, off. Uh, it's up 49 bucks, nearly 10%. Tesla, up 27 bucks. That's 3%. Mercado Libre, up 26 bucks, 3%. To the downside, Zebra Technologies, up 7.5% or 26 buckaroonies. Waters Corp, down 18 bucks or 5%. Cineos Health. Down 13 bucks or 16%. Avis rent a car off 12 bucks, 6%. Encore, Encore wire off 8% or 11 bucks. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers out there. But let's begin the day by taking a look at what's going on by looking at the daily equity future contract. So we'll do it a couple of different ways. The first way, we'll go take a look at those white background screens. As we take a look at this, here's what we know. Price is trading above all profile, well, daily profile levels, I should say. We've got no topping signal. Now, you don't see the A to B equals CD pattern drawn in there. I'll switch back over to the other charts momentarily, and you'll see those patterns that are out there. But that's what's in place for each of the four equity future contracts. Now, the case of the NQ, uh, where's this next target? It'll be the A to B equals CD price projection. The same with the Dow, same with the Russell 2000. Well, the Russell 2000 does have resistance at 1919. That is his TD9 count breakdown level out there. So that's an area to be watching. We're at 1900 bucks as we speak. Now, each of their oscillator and change lines on the daily time frame have changed color. Typically, so that does mean that eventually we're going to see price and that line catch up to each other. That typically occurs, not always, but it typically occurs after we get a topping pattern, in this case here, for any or each of these uh, equity future contracts. So, But on a pullback, it, that still becomes the... That's really the test that each of us are looking for at this stage here. The ideal test would be, or an ideal test, like an ideal test just simply pulling back, testing and rejecting that green oscillator and change line. Why is that important? Well, the green, the difference between the green and the red oscillator and change line tells us whether the price oscillator is above zero or below zero. When price is above the oscillator and change line, it says that we have a rising price oscillator. 
if it's below a red line, it says we have a falling price oscillator. If it's above, if, if it's above the line, you've got a rising price oscillator. The question is whether it's above zero or below zero. If it's below the oscillator and change line, then you've got a falling price oscillator. Again, the question is, is it above zero or below zero. A falling price oscillator below zero is very bearish. A rising price oscillator above zero is very bullish. Those are the conditions that we have right now for the daily time frame. But ideally, price will pull back, test that. And if it does test and rejects it, that signals to you and I that we are headed to the up, uh, headed to higher price out there. Now, my uh, we've we've already gotten the two week uh, counter trend. Well, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that momentarily. Let me go switch over to the uh, let's go switch over to the daily the other daily set of charts out there. Uh, those are helpful to identify the next price projection areas out here. In the case of the ES Mini, that would take us up towards the forty two twenty six level. You can see prices above the 1 to 1.272, which was 41.19. The case of the NQ, the next price objective is 13.282 for its A to B equals CD pattern. In the case of the uh, Dow, now the Dow still has retained this new profile that's attempting to form. The others have gone away, but the Dow is still there. The profile is formed below price if it does take hold. That's a bullish signal out there. Price can still pull back and test it. The test it would be the 32,174 level out here. But its next price projection to the upside would take us into the 32,943 area. In the case of the uh, Russell 2000, that would be 1930. However, you and I identified at 1919, you've got a TD9 count breakdown area. We're in bar number five on a daily basis. You could get a TD9 count topping signal, but the earliest that that would show up would be um, today's Tuesday. Thursday would be Friday. Yeah, so uh, we won't hold off for that pattern just yet. We'll certainly come back to that at the end of the uh, week out here. So what I was alluding to earlier, let me get back to another set of charts out here. I think this is where I've got them. And uh, I'll just pull this over. So, yeah, so I'm going to pull this over here to the black background screens. Yeah, okay, everybody's seen it. So on the weekly time frame. So in a weekly time frame, here's what we know. Well, first, this is a weekly time frame for the NQ. Ever since the high that came in, that was the day was November 22nd, uh, 2021 out there. So ever since then, we've had really two counter trend rallies of significance. The first one was a two bar rally. You see that that was racked to basically test those highs. And then it was a move to the downside. We had a three bar rally that took place crossbar out here that took place that began the week of march 18th and lasted through the april 1st time period price got back below that red oscillator and changed on that was curtains to the downside now you've got that nice roads momentum indicator bottom we now are in week number two that's been confirmed so if there's going to so we should be nearing a period just simply from a counter trend move standpoint where the we should see some type of short-term top Though if, if it's a TD9 count pattern where you're on bar five, you've got to get to bar number eight. It's Tuesday, so that's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is the first day we get bar number eight. And that says that you could see a short-term TD9 count top form between Friday and then the following Tuesday out there. But any bearish reversal candle would do the same. That would give us a sell the D point pattern. So that's in the case of the NQ out here. Now, that's the case for each of the, uh, the indices. So where do we want to go from here? Or we're going to go to a break, and I'll figure that out during the next couple of minutes. Please join me as soon as we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back now, folks. So I switched this to the uh, NDX 100 chart. We went to the monthly time frame. We're back in the 2007 time frame. We looked at that for the NQ a few minutes ago on the weekly time frame uh, chart out here. On the monthly time frame, you can see how uh, from the high that uh, formed back in October 2007, that led to a first a four-bar decline. Can, and when I say a four-bar decline, I'm referring to each bar's close below the prior bar out there. So we're just looking at consecutive closes to the upside or to the downside. The black numbers are the upside, red numbers are the downside. Then what we got was we got a three-bar rally. And we have really two rallies. Uh, we, we took a look at the weekly rallies. On a monthly basis, you had two rallies that formed during a 2007-2009 decline. One that was a three-bar rally, the other was a two-bar rally. And you can see you had four bars to the downside, then you went three bars to the downside, one to the upside, two more to the downside, and then uh, basically that was it. And then we were off to the races to the upside there. So what I expect here is that uh, we should see some type of short-term top on the uh, daily time frame. That pulls back into that oscillator and change line that we took a look at. If we get a test and rejection of that, that would add to the idea that we should get a two-month rally. We've already been through month number one inside the NDX. So that says a rally in August. And that rally in August might take us up to the oscillator and change line, 14,651. If we take a look at this chart out here, this chart is now of the Dow. This is also on this is a weekly time frame that we're looking at here. Here I've got my horizontal trading ranges. Uh, those are the green lines out there. And those are established by identifying the largest number for the time the time period that I have it up here, uh, the, the, the data that I have, I should say, uh, looking for the largest number of uh, co-located opens or closes. Doesn't matter whether it's at a price point that's a close or it's an open out there. And uh, that price point came in at uh, 10,558. The second price point, number of largest co-located opens or closes came in at the uh, 7936 level there were 65 there there were 186 at the 10 558 area that set up the primary trading range boundary lines or the horizontal trading range once you have that distance you just simply add uh, that uh, that value to it and you've got those other horizontal trading range which typically act as support or resistance levels then i've got the diagonal uh, channel lines or trend lines out there the blue one you got the uptrend channel uh, coming from the uh, uh, October 2020 level out there. You can see the yellow ones. Those yellow ones take us all the way back into the 2000 
ish uh, time frame and even back before that out there. Now, the cool thing about diagonal channel lines, just like horizontal, is once you have those established, if you take a look at the yellow lines, you just simply continue to replicate that with the same pricing distance here. And oddly enough, once we got the first two in place, look where price stopped, uh, uh, you know, on that second dash line. And then as price was able to get above that, where did price stop? It stopped at that uh, third or that second dash line, I should say, up there. So uh, nothing that's CV forced out there. And now what we have here is you've got the descending trend line, the ch ch trend lines, those are the red ones, that the Dow has been in since the beginning of the year. I would presume that this two-month rally should take us right up to that descending trend line area, and that's towards the 34,152 level. We're not going to try to tag this to the number or anything, just giving you a general idea of where price is likely headed to. We're at 32,6. We're talking about getting up to 34. Uh, 150 or so in that range out there. And that's what it looks like the markets are set up. But what we need to see here is we need to see that test and rejection of that daily green oscillator and change line out there. So that's the overview of the markets at this stage here. People may be saying to themselves, you know, how can that possibly take place? How are these markets going to head higher? You know, the one thing you cannot underestimate is the uh, value of the uh, global flow of capital that is coming out here. And so uh, at this stage, that's what this set of charts is looking at. It's looking at the euro, both at the top and the bottom. Uh, prices are below both the lowest closing uh, level, 1.034. That was from 2017 out here. And that suggests that what price wants to do over time is target the 82 cent area, the 84 cent level. Um, so that will that will continue to send capital to the uh, U.S. So as uh, as more countries over in Europe default on their debt because they tied their debt to the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar index is moving higher. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Let's just move over there and take a look at that as soon as we can get there. Here's the U.S. dollar index. So now you're looking at uh, multiple different time frames out there. Granted, the dollar is pulling back, but that, that, it's not like the dollar is toast or anything. It made its one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection, 109.47. So the next level is 116. The next level above that is 125. The next level above that is 135. I presume that's where we're likely headed to, at least back to the highs of 2001. And that's in the uh, 129 level. Why is that going to happen out here? Well, because just simply put, uh, we're the reserve currency of the uh, world. And as people are uh, concerned, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you are living in Europe and you've watched the euro get decimated out there, at some point in time, People are going to say, I need to protect my capital. Where am I going to protect it? I'm going to go ahead and put it in the U.S. dollar index out there. I'm going to put it in U.S. dollars or U.S.-based assets out here. Um, so this is going to continue to move higher. And as more countries that issue debt denominated in U.S. dollars, as their currency weakens, it costs them that much more just to pay the interest payments, let alone the debt payments. So we've already seen a number of defaults that are out there. Those are going to continue. And that's what's going to drive the uh, U.S. stock market to uh, – levels that uh, you know that we haven't uh, that we can't even imagine 60,000 inside of the uh, Dow out there so uh, but look we're gonna take things one step at a time and talk about taking things one step at a time why don't we go to a couple of questions that have come in we've got three that have come in so far by uh, email so let's get to the uh, first one the first one coming in from David H and David in Panama City says hey Steve-O hey david -O. Uh, based on your charts, do you think Tesla can reach uh, 1100 by uh, monthly expiration of August 19th out here? Well, let's go change over and let's get the, those charts fired up. Uh, uh, Tesla. So let me get that going here and then we'll change the uh, screens. Um, now let's go see what the charts say. So David, momentarily we'll have the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame charts up here for uh, Tesla. And you're asking about August 19th. You're talking about 17 days from today. Here's what we know at this stage of the game. What Tesla is uh, doing, it's got a, uh, certainly got an A to B equals C to the upside, but no uh, no bearish reversal candle. Price above profiles. Uh, so that suggests higher price. We take a look at the daily time frame chart. Let's come take a look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart shows that price right now is taking out or trying to take out its resistance level, and that is the top of its weekly profile. That level out there, David, is uh, 900.56. Let me make sure I have that correct. Give me just a moment. I just want to make sure that my eyes are not lying to me. T-S-L-A. I don't want to give you a wrong figure out there. So write this on your pad of paper. 905, 903.56. If on Friday, Tesla closes above that, 
then you'll be that'll t- take that'll suggest a change in trend, quite frankly, and that would then suggest a move to ten ninety two twenty two. That'll be your target. You're asking, can it get to eleven hundred? By that day, well, you've got to take things one step at a time. So we're going to take a look at where the next resistance level is for you. So assuming that test, it's only Tuesday, but assuming they can close above 903.56, then your next battle will be at the monthly oscillator and change line, currently 973. Dave, that number is going to go up and down, uh, but you can use that as a general benchmark out there. But if price can overcome that oscillator and change line and do that post haste, that's going to suggest a further rally, and that's what it take you up to that 10. 10- 92 area. So do we see possibilities coming from the charts? Absolutely. No topping pattern on the daily time frame. Try to take out resistance on the weekly. And if you do that, you should get up to the 973 level. And above that, and 1092 is the number. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, David, one last thing with regard to uh, Tesla out here that you'll probably want to pay attention to. So what I have up on my screen here is the uh, seasonal pattern over the course of the last 12 years for Tesla. And here, what I happen to be showing, and there's only three of them, but uh, are the how Tesla uh, responded during the midterm election years. So this chart here, this is a cool tool provided to by the folks from uh, Seasonex out there. So what this is suggesting is that during a, uh, the midterm elections is to expect or anticipate some kind of top in early August. Now, this uh, actually shows up as the date of August the uh, 7th out there. And then you can see down below during the midterm years, July is a, a very tough month for uh, Tesla. So just uh, consider that. Now, if we get rid of the uh, seasonal or the uh, midterm aspect of that, then the uh, stock here for Tesla 
looks like this. And July still, it's, it's, it's one of the weaker months out there, but it does say that uh, prices continue rising. I would say we're more in the midterm than we are in this type of cycle out there, so I thought it would add that uh, for you. I do hope that that helps you out. So best of luck with your trade there. Next question coming in from Hector and Patty. Hector and Patty say, happy Taco Tuesday back at you. ExxonMobil TD9 count of last week, still valid or no? Thanks. So let's go take a look. You're asking about the TD9 counts. We're going to go ahead and change screens out here. And uh, Hector, there was a TD9 count on the daily that uh, you want to really be aware of, and that uh, formed a couple of days ago. It was the bar following bar number nine. Pretty cool, huh? That was a gap to the upside. That was a wide-ranging bar. That was everything. Kind of cool how these TD9 count patterns work. Remember, that top needs to form on bars eight, nine, the bar following nine. It's the high of those three bars that are going to set up the uh, significant top out here. Now, what we have is prices pulled back. Now, it's also a change line. Hector, on the daily time frame, has changed color. So that line and price should catch up with each other. When and if they do... If we get a bullish test, that would be a test and rejection of that. That then says price heads to the upside. Now, you still will always have resistance from that TD9 count top that formed on Jan uh, July 29th out there. So that high is 97.52. That's your resistance level. On a weekly basis, you had a nice road momentum indicator top that was formed with that bearish shooting star candle. That took price right back to support out there, which held. Price uh, last week closed above the top of its daily pro a weekly profile. The top of its weekly profile is 95.66, uh, 95, 95.06 out there. Price can close above that again this week. That would be a bullish outcome. It says we head higher. And on the monthly time frame chart, you've got a TD9 count pattern as well. But price above its oscillator and change line, which is green, so and above its profile levels. So it's really somewhat of a neutral signal. But we do have tops in place for the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. More likely than not, this is just simply Hector and Patty, all about a test of that daily oscillator and change line. So that's what I'd be watching. Again, that's currently printed at 9094. I don't expect that's where the test will take place out there. But a test rejection should then suggest that price will continue to move higher. So hope that helps you out. Uh, thanks so much for the request, and you have a, a terrific Tuesday. The next question is the only question I've got at this moment. So if you'd like to get into the on deck circle, if you're inside the Tiger Sin, go ahead and type something in or go ahead and send me an email, Steve at TFN.com. This next question is coming in from uh, Nicholas A. And Nick wants to take a look at the SMHs. So let's get those fired up on our screen out here. And then we'll go read this question, which is Hey, Steve, would you please go over SMHs, resistance level specifically? Thank you. So we'll get those to uh, populate here. Now, what I can tell you just by looking at my other, oh, geez, got to type in the actual correct symbol. Uh, just so that each of you know, there is no symbol that is SMNH out there. So it's good to clear that here. That's for sure. But we'll wait for the SMHs to actually populate. What I do know, what you now can see out here, is price is trading above the top of its daily profile. That suggests 343.70 is where it's headed to. 343.70 is going to be your first resistance level. That's a CD9 count breakdown level for its daily time frame. As we look at the weekly time frame, price is above its descending trend line out there. It's above the top of its weekly profile. Uh, so where's the next level of resistance? I think we have to just simply switch over. So on a weekly basis, the next level of resistance would be really probably the swing point right out here from the week of June 3rd. So that's at the high of about 249.12. You got 243.70 from the daily TD9 count breakdown level. And on a monthly time frame, what we have here is price regained its bullish structured monthly profile. Now, what that means to us, uh, Nicholas, is that if uh, well, you only had one bar below the bottom of that bullish structured monthly profile, nonetheless, if this is only a counter trend move, then where the SMHs should find resistance is at 246.42. I say that with um, about a 70% conviction rate out there. If we had two bars that had closed below the bottom of the bullish structure profile, then I would give you 100% conviction there. But nonetheless, you are specifically asking for resistance. So on the daily, it's 243.70. On the weekly, it's going to be that swing point that uh, would take you into the 249 level. And on the monthly time frame chart, 246.42 out there. So I hope that helps you out, Nick. Thanks so much for writing in, and uh, have a, a terrific uh, Tuesday. We do have our request inside the Tiger's Den. Thank you. Uh, Tarpon2 wants to take a look at ticker symbol CVNA. Let's see if Stevie can spell that correctly on the first try. He has. Wow, you got to love that. 
That is called smooth typing instead of smooth jazz out there. So, again, the ticker symbol there is CVNA, and CVNA is uh, what? Well, right now it's trading above its TD9 count breakdown level on the daily time frame at 30.64. You get another close above that. Then on the daily chart out there, that suggests that it wants to move higher, moving higher to where? Well, the next price target to the upside would be uh, 60, nah, 60.85. 60.85. So first, you want to see it close above this 10.64 level. Two consecutive closes above that. That would be beautiful. Did I say 30.64? Stevie, come on. Get your act together out there. 30.64. Two consecutive days to close above that says we head to higher ground. On a weekly basis, you have a, what well, looks like, yeah, I can't really tell. But let's just take a look at where resistance is. For, is this Carvana? It is Carvana. I saw one of their trucks the other day. I, I still can't figure out how these guys are making money. Well, maybe they're not making money. But in any event out there, 4037 is the uh, price can close about 3064 for two consecutive days. Then what we're looking at, Tarpon, is uh, 4037 as being the next resistance level. On a monthly basis, now I can see why you're really looking at this, you've got a nice TD9 count bottom. This suggests over time that price and oscillator and change line should test each other. Now, the oscillator and change line is currently printed at 138.08. I'm not saying that's where that price is going to take us to, but that is the bigger picture here. So Carvana has got a uh, what looks like a nice bottoming pattern for the daily time frame. Price trying to take out a key resistance level, 3064. Get a second, get two consecutive closes above that. We're off to 4037. You close about 4037. Boy, that's going to bring that 138-ish level into play. So, Tarpon, any questions about that? If so, uh, just simply go ahead and uh, uh, let me know. We'll go over those. Otherwise, that is the review of uh, Carvana out there. Now, let's see. Was Nancy... Nancy says, Apple, if we have time. It seems to get stuck at the 162.25 level. So let's take a look at AAPL out here. Let's see if we can help Nancy understand why Apple is stopping in that 162 level. See if there's anything that pops out to us. So right now, price is trading out at 160.55, and voila. Here is our answer, Nancy. 163.75. You should have been just more exact about that. Let's see, did price actually hit that? The high... Last week, on a weekly basis, was 163.63. Nancy, you see the bottom of that uh, weekly profile? Maybe you don't see it on these charts here. Let me do this. Let me switch over to the black background charts. It's a little bit clearer. And so you'll see that as we go into the break. And the answer to your question, though, came from those weekly profiles. Bearish structure weekly profile. And that's where resistance is at. 163.75 to 167.64. I hope that answers your question. We'll be right back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it could seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. You have the Dow down 250, S&P off 12, NASDAQ 100 off 33. Russell is up uh, two points out there. Um, so if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, let's just go uh, over here. The New York Stock Exchange, we discussed this yesterday. Uh, New York Stock Exchange has a uh, wave number uh, a TD9 count top out there. In addition to having a TD9, I'm not showing you the TD, that, that chart. Well, I, I can. Give me a moment here. Might as well be thorough of that. So if we take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, I'll just simply pull this chart over. We'll do it on the black background screens out there. And you'll see a nice TD9 count top. Of course, I've got uh, marked out here on this chart here the other TD9 count tops or bottoms. And so uh, the New York Stock Exchange tends to uh, uh, really like this uh, pattern out here. So you got a TD9 count top that's in place, and it remains in place uh, unless we get a close above 15,354.73. If we did get that, that would tell us that its intent is to go to 16.019. But now that we've got this in place out here, what price should do is target that oscillator and change line, the 14889. Nancy's asking a question, why is the market selling off? Well, I'm just trying to give you a little bit of the bigger picture here and what to expect or anticipate. So the general market has a TD9 count top. Inside the New York Stock Exchange, we looked at this yesterday, both the uh, top 100 U.S. stocks and the top 100 international stocks have TD9 count tops as well. Now we take a look at this black background chart here. You've got the advanced client oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. That is panel number two. You can see that this thing is well above the overbought level. Overbought is at 150. Now this is a nice larger bullish sign out here. This is, adds to the idea that we should see or could see a two to three month rally. We're going to focus more on the two month rally out there. But uh, typically when the advanced client oscillator gets above or closes above plus 150, it tells us about future highs to come. Doesn't mean it's tomorrow, but tells us about future highs because price also has to work off the oversold condition out there. So that's another thing to look at. And then I mentioned just briefly as we were doing, I believe, the uh, one o'clock update. And that was that uh, what we're seeing out here is a rising potential, a rising bottoms pattern in the spot volatility index out there. So that's also something to pay attention to. Uh, you can see other instances where we have rising spot volatility index low uh, closes out here. And each of those ended up leading in some type of retracement or something larger than that out here. I expect that this will just be a retracement as that New York Stock Exchange works off its overbought condition. Um, but uh, that's that you know we're gonna, this, the market's going to tell us what its intentions are. Now, if you're trying to understand what the market is doing today, and I think really, Nancy, that's in essence one of your other questions: Why did it sell off? Well, it's all about understanding where support and resistance is. That I mean, if we if we can get that down pat, then it helps to answer those questions. Just like understanding why was Apple running into resistance where it did. Well, once we put up the charts, we could see where the profiles were at. Those profiles told us where buyers and sellers are. That answered the question it was really simple the market answered the question not stevie i'm just narrating the charts here 
just your narrator. Now you might get tired of my narration, but that's what I am. Now, if we take a look at the two-hour time frame charts out here, and this is what I picked up on earlier this morning, provided this to subscribers in, in the newsletter so they can understand where the markets were likely to be trading today. Well, if we take a look at what the ES Mini did, it did this this morning, 8 o'clock. This confirmed a TD9 count bottom right at the bottom of its uh, uh, support level of its profile for the two-hour time frame chart and just above the TD9 count breakout level of 4081. Now, what did price do during the time period that we were on the air? Well, it got up to the TD9 count breakdown level. Let me just expand out the chart here for the ES Mini. So we know that support held both the profile and TD9 count breakout support. And what we also know is resistance held 40, uh, what is that, 41, 44, 50 out there. Um, so price is just trading right now or consolidating between support and resistance out there. Support is held, resistance is held. Which one's going to win? I don't know the answer to that question. I do suspect, though, that the lows will give way to work off that overbought condition out there. And maybe that's the message of that rising uh, spot volatility index. But right now, 4081 is support. And it remains support until you see a close below that. That's the ES Mini. If we take a look at the NQ out here, the NQ also formed a TD9 count bottom on the two-hour time frame chart. It did that this morning. It did that, I believe. It was also at 8 o'clock. Let's just take a look at it. It did. And uh, then what price has done is uh, price has tested, again, it's TD9 count breakdown level, 1308475. It's telling us it's going to struggle to get above that level, at least today. Now, what we don't have here is a support level or a TD9 count breakout area, but we do have support. And it's the low of the TD9 count pattern, which was the bar following bar number nine. And so that support level for everybody who watched playing the home game is 12, 8, 14, 75 for the uh, September NQ contract out there. Price closed below that, then we're headed lower, or it's headed lower. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, what it has is a Rosemontum indicator top. That led to a, a test of breakout support at 32,458. That led to a TD9 count bottom, which then led to a test of the green oscillator and change line at 13,703. So the key level to be watching here, yes, it's 32,458, but really it has to be the low of the TD9 count pattern. So the key area to be watching here is going to be 32,374. If we see it close below that, odds favor were headed lower. And the Russell 2000, it's the, uh, it just simply is the uh, not, not wanting to go test any levels of support, so to speak, and resistance, you know, where is resistance here? That's a great question. On the daily time frame, I don't uh, show that because price is trading above the top of its uh, daily profile out there. So I hope that answers the question with regard to what the markets are doing. Uh, each morning, I go through these multiple time frame charts looking to see which time frame, if any, sometimes there's none, but which time frame, if any, is providing us with the most consistent information. And this morning, it was really clear it was the two-hour time frame chart. And so hopefully that answers your question, Nancy, with regard to why is the market doing what it's doing? Got right up to where those sellers are at. The sellers fired away. Why did Apple has stopped where it did? Got right up to where the sellers are at. They went ahead and fired away. So what do you want to do next out here? Let me just check, see if there's any, uh, I think there was a request. Oh, XBI. Uh, McGuppy wants to go take a look at XBI. And the question specifically is, is today by the D point on the daily time frame? So I don't believe that it is, but let's go ahead and open up this uh, chart out here. And uh, that is ticker symbol XBI. So let's get that going. Make sure I'm the right set of charts. I am. And XBI is the S&P Biotech ETF. And as this daily chart pops up here, what we're going to see is a Rogemont indicator top. That Rogemont indicator top has led to nothing more than, a, in fact, that, that Rogemont indicator top hasn't even been confirmed. What we have out here is a consolidate. We do not have a buy the D point pattern. There is no A to B equals CD out here. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, there, I guess I could draw one in. If I were to draw that in, it would look like this. Like, Guppy, there's your A to B point. And I'll just move that over to where the C point would be. Let's move this over here. If I can grab it. And come on. What the heck is going on there? Maybe I just have to redraw it. That's weird. Okay, that's really weird. Okay, uh, there we go. Now we got it. So there, there would be your, so it hasn't gotten down far enough. We need to get into the 7705 level. But the real pattern out here is the uh, consolidation with inside its daily profile. 
So the buy point is about the uh, 78.59 level. This morning's low was at 78.72. The sell point is at about 84.63. That's the top of its profile out there. As I look at the weekly time frame here, you have a new profile that has formed. Your resistance level there is 86.41. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The answer is no, this is not a buy the D point pattern on the daily time frame. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow off uh, 261, S&P's off 13, NASDAQ is off 32, the Russell's up uh, three points out there. So the big mover out there is uh, AMTD Digital, HKD is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, if you just take a look at today, today this has gone from a low of, just the today's trading range out here, it's gone from a low of 668 all the way up to the high came in at uh, 25 55 and you're trading 1899 right now but just looking at the intraday chart so this the interesting thing is today is going to complete a uh, is going to confirm a td9 count top tomorrow will complete the pattern remember the high can form a bars eight nine or the bar following nine so tomorrow will be the bar following nine as we look at the 195 minute time frame we can see that a td9 count top is forming right now now this bar here completes at uh well not till 4 p.m out there 
But it does look like this is going to form a, a TD9 count topping pattern out here. The 130 minute, I don't have a topping signal, nor do I for the 65. And really, I don't have one, even though it looks like Rosemont indicator top on the 30 minute chart, I really don't. But the levels to be watching on pullbacks out here, if this is going to maintain its momentum, that's pretty easy. That's that green oscillator and change line. You can even see that on the 15 minute basis out here. So just simply expand out this chart. Uh, so you can take a look. Is this going to continue its momentum? And here's where this green oscillator and change line would come in handy. So right now, price is testing that green oscillator and change line. And that is at the price point of uh, 1823.74. If price closes below that, there is support at 1730. But that could be signaling to us a, a change in a trend out here for HKD. So the daily is saying be careful. Um, uh, because of the uh, the TD9 count top that should complete uh, by tomorrow out there. So I hope that helps. Uh, somebody might take a lottery ticket out there to the uh, downside, but looks pretty strong, doesn't it? That looks sort of strong, except for that TD9 count top. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next after that. Tom O'Brien will take us on home. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Take care, folks. <laughs>